Hello all my students at home. This video is to go over our elements and periodic uh, table notes for those of you at home. So this is a good time to get out your notebook and your pencil and to practice our note taking skills. So uh, yes, yeah, so that's what you need to do right now. Feel free to pause this video whenever you need and to rewind what you need to read here. So our learning targets today will be, I will be able to describe what a physical property is, which is kind of what we started to talk about yesterday. And I will be able to explain what an element is and find it on the periodic table. So what is an element? Elements are the simplest pure substances and they cannot be broken down into any other substances. So they are made of atoms and those atoms are special to that element. They have a special number of electrons depending on the element. What are some elements you already know about? They're used quite often off, actually in our daily life. So things like gold, silver, helium, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, all these words that we hear a lot in science are actually elements at their most basic. So everything is made of matter it can be made of one or more elements. So like I said, we have some elements that we know to be by themselves, like oxygen. If you can hear my kitty, she's meowing in the background. Sorry, guys. There's like oxygen. We can have pure oxygen that is just oxygen atoms. Or we can have a kind of a compound, they're called, where it's like a big molecule, like sugar, which sugar is made up of carbon, oxygen and hydrogen. So it has three elements because carbon's an element, oxygen's an element, and hydrogen is an element. And they all form together to make some a bigger molecule. There are over a hundred kinds of elements found naturally on the earth and they're actually organized in what we are probably familiar with as a periodic table. So a periodic table is organized by both size and characteristic of that particular atom or element. Here's that picture bigger. I just thought it was kind of cool because for each of these elements it shows a picture of it or something that represents it and I think that's a cool way of showing the elements. So when we're reading the periodic table, elements are organized by the number of electrons they have from least to most. So if we look at this one, we start at the very top left with our least amount of electrons. We have hydrogen up here, which only has one electron. And it goes all the way down to ones down here that are even heavier with 118 electrons. So from least to most electrons. And these elements, they are grouped um, not only by size, like that electron number, but also they have similar properties as you move across a row, which is called a period, or down a column, which is called a group. So let's look again. So our rows go across. Um, elements that are across in these uh, rows or periods have characteristics that are similar. But more commonly, they're known by the properties that are similar in their columns or groups, as they call it, going down. So as you can see, this periodic table is actually color-coded. So if you see, we have all of our pink ones in our column or group, as they're called. They all have similar characteristics or similar um, identifiers, as do all this section in the middle things like that. So they're actually grouped by similar characteristics. So all the ones that are color coded have similar characteristics to the other ones of that color. How do we read our periodic table square? So each square represents one type of element. You can get lots of information about that element just from the square and its position on the table. So if we look at our little box here, we have our hydrogen blown up a little bit so that we can see it a little closer. We have our big H, which is the symbol for hydrogen. So the big number, our big one here is the symbol of our um, element. 
up in the left hand corner we have its atomic number down below we have its name and if my little thing would go away we would see the atomic weight underneath it let me see if I nope it won't go away I, I don't know if you can see this or not but I think you probably can this thing down here but that is how we kind of read each square so you can get a lot of information sometimes squares are even more complicated than that and they have even more information but that's a basic look of how the square that represents that element looks oh yeah there's our atomic weight okay so let's practice real quick I know this is recorded but maybe as I ask these questions just think to yourself so what is the name of the element vanadium is correct what is its atomic mass? That's actually the one down at the bottom. That's 50.942. It's the same as the atomic weight down here. And then what is its atomic number? 23. Yep, up in the corner. So once again, that atomic number is up in that corner, and that atomic weight or mass is down at the bottom. So we've talked a lot about physical properties. So elements all have specific physical properties. So things like we talked about yesterday, like color, density, melting point, boiling point, those are all parts of those physical properties and elements. Each element has its own physical property. Some of the other ones are like metallic and non-metallic, but we'll get into more of that later. So that's like just a very quick overview. What I'm going to have you do now, since I have you here, I'm going to explain what where you're heading next. So we're going to do a element research assignment. Um, I want you guys to choose an element from the periodic table. Choose. I have one of three options for how to create your slide about your element. You can make a Pokemon card, you can make an Instagram profile, or you can make a normal slide. So that's what these look like. So I picked Iridium and I made some Pokemon cards here. Um, I want you guys to include information about it and I'll, I'll clarify more about what it needs to be on there in uh, the presentation, your assignment. So that was a Pokemon card. You could do a Instagram profile. I don't know if Instagram is still relevant or not, but that's what I have. Or you could just do it a normal slide. So I made just like a quick example here. You'd want maybe a little bit more information. Maybe you want to spruce it up a little bit more. But that's the basics of the three options you can choose from. Um, in your assignment, it will specify what needs to be on your slide. So when you go to do this assignment in Google Classroom, number five element research assignment, be sure to read through everything that you need to include on your slide. With that, I will be on Zoom. Let me know if you have any questions. Otherwise, I'll see you guys later.